A member of the public has raised the alarm for a missing kite surfer one kilometre north of the patrolled area. If the kite surfer is indeed still in the water, it's a huge area to search for. And Mother Nature is not on side today with the outgoing tide, all rips are in action. In no time, Piha lifeguard Chode and ambulance officer and lifeguard Travis head out into the unknown. At the time, just because we've just finished packing up patrol, we've only got the one IRB, so we'll have to stand by and find out what the story is and whether we might need to get another IRB. Ten minutes into the search, Chode and Travis find a ditched kite. Call them and tell them that we have no person attached to the kite. Ah, I got hit, Ivy. We have the kite. We do not have the kite surfer. This guy's not attached to his kite anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know where it's going to be. I'd say he's out from us. Uh, we're now going tight at the moment. Maybe on the bar, probably over. Hey, More bad news. A line of the kite has wrapped itself around the engine. Fortunately, the motor is still going. IRB, IRB from Zum Zum Kobe. Right now, we've just abandoned the kite. It's too hard for us to deal with. We'll come back in and see if we can find a moment. Suddenly, lifeguard Lummox spots something black in the water. All that can be seen is a head bobbing. With no time to spare, he takes the paddleboard in hope of reaching him in time. IRB, IRB, this is Zum Zum. I've sent Lummox out on the paddleboard. We've got somebody 150 metres just in front of the rhino. Over. The IRB also heads back to check out the swimmer. Lummox reaches the person first. Too exhausted to pull himself onto the paddleboard, the man leans on it while they wait for the IRB. clear, this is the missing kite surfer. Once the guy is safely back on shore, Travis checks the motor for kite debris. He is going out for another trip. Uh, we're going to try and recover at point. Yeah, but if you can, it's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> Chode and Travis go out one more time, this time to retrieve a very expensive kite. I said to them, I prefer, I don't mind with the kite. I'm here, it's, it's okay for me. But for Chope and Travis, it is not over yet. The battle has only just started. Three more. Stand on it. Like a minute down. Give me the knife. They are determined to win this battle, but not only do they have to repeal the feats of the kite, they also suffer the thrashing waves against the IRB. Hold on. Hold up. Hold. Hold. Disaster. Travis is thrown out, and he just manages to avoid getting his neck sliced by one of the kite lines.
After a five minute search in treacherous conditions, Jode spots Travis in the distance and pulls him to safety. Yeah, cover that, all understood. Chode and Travis return empty-handed. Plan B is engaged. I'll just get some cable-cutting stuff, yeah. and then... Uh, <laughs> we'll get some cable-cutting stuff, and then we'll uh, go back and have a look at it. If it's safe, we'll do it. If it's not, then the guy's going to lose his kite. They're about two and a half grand, though, so it would be nice if we can recover it for him. He's had a bad enough day already. The second boat arrives for backup, while our patient is kept warm with the foil wrap. Two more lifeguards join the recovery operation in IRB1, Travis and Chode. Chris and Skimpy in IRB2. Attempt number three for the pickup. This time, the kite is demoted. They tow it beside the boat, dragged onto the closest beach. Here, the air is let out so it can be easily transported for its journey back to the main beach. I tried to come back just with the kite, but at the time, no more wind, the kite has been falling, and uh, I couldn't uh, raise it up again, so I was uh, pulled pull, pull by the kite and the deep water, I couldn't take it back, so at this time I leave the kite, I've left it, tried to swim, but I couldn't, and many too much waves, so I, I couldn't swim, I, I couldn't swim. In the water, the Frenchman could only do one thing. Yeah, awesome. Crying God, <laughs> that's all I could do. And uh, when I first saw the boat, I said, hey, 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 after too much, many, many call, many call, many call, but I, I felt that they couldn't hear me because of the wind, so I was, Honestly, I think I would die. The Frenchman is chauffeured down the beach where he is reunited with his waiting friends. 